<laughs> Look who you ran into. It's Dennis. What's Yay! up, buddy? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Small world. Right? Well, I, I knew you were coming out here, but I didn't know what. All right, how we doing here? Hot, sweaty, I'm sorry. Um, pretty Arkansas River Valley behind me on one side. There's some lovely people floating. Hi, it's my friend Jack. Hi Jack. Even though the river came down a little bit overnight, quite a bit substantially, now it's down into the like 33s, 34s. Still gonna give slide at a Rincon a go. Should be big water play fun, so give it a go. Woo! Yeah, she knows what's up. All right. Leave anything? I don't think so.
All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in and watching another one of the videos. I do appreciate it. Um, this one was a lot of fun. This section of river is a lot of fun when the water's up. Lots of playfulness to it. Definitely a big water feel. Uh, it was nice, too, to go with somebody like Jack, who is a pretty seasoned paddler. So that kind of uh, stress and worry about keeping track of people is kind of a little bit lesser. Definitely a lot more just kind of enjoyment of the day. Um, yeah, a lot of fun out there. Uh, for the history and the geology, I could do a podcast each for these topics for a half an hour. Um, it's that diverse and exciting, but I'll try to keep it wrapped up. This might be the first time the history and geology might be longer than the actual paddling video, but so be it. Um, starting with the history, Salida, like many towns and communities in Colorado, was a railroad town. Uh, it was originally known as South Arkansas and is spurred from the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad arriving into the Upper Arkansas Valley in 1880. Um, less than a year after its existence, there were several hundred to a thousand people already here. And over the years, thanks to a well-diversified portfolio, including agriculture or agriculture, uh, mining, resources, livestock, um, and then the tourism boom of the later 20th century. Salida has kind of always just found its place and needed to do what it needed to do to survive. So um, Salida has always benefited from a very central location uh, back in the railroad days, in addition to the main line to the east coming in from Canyon City. Uh, the main line also went to the west to Gunnison over Marshall Pass and then north to Leadville as well. Um, in addition, some spur line serviced areas such as Monarch to the west, uh, Turret kind of to the northeast, and then the Kerber Creek Bonanza mines area in the northern San Luis Valley. So um, it's always kind of been a little bit of like a hub of the wheel, if you will, and kind of one of the reasons why it's survived and done as well as, as it has for so long is being kind of that crossroads there. Um, as for the geology, the geology is actually pretty incredible, pretty fascinating. Um, this stretch of river from Salida down to Rincon is hugely popular uh, with paddlers across the state. And I don't think many of them realize just how dynamic and interesting the geology is as you cut through there. Um, I got this copy of Roadside Geology Colorado here. I've even just taking a look at the strat column here as it stretches. Notice from Salida running over to uh, the Wellsville area. Just look at all the different layers that it cuts through. Um, the upper Arkansas River Valley itself where Salida is located is actually an extension of the Rio Grande Rift, which is a large rift process or a place where the crust is kind of pulling apart from itself. This rift extends all the way down into northern New Mexico. Um, the mountains to the west of the Arkansas Valley are pulling slightly to the west, and then the mountains to the east are pulling slightly to the east. And uh, over time, the original Arkansas River or an ancestral river actually drained from the upper Arkansas River Valley down into the northern San Luis Valley. But a combination of mountain building during what we call the Laramide Orogeny and then also the a process called stream capture, um, a stream coming up from the east out of what we now know as Canyon City, eventually broached some mountain ridges and captured the upper Arkansas River, and it now goes down that way instead of over Ponch Pass through that area. So um, as the river leaves Salida, it cuts through some just valley gravels, stuff that's just washed down over the last millennia geologically from the mountains above. But once it leaves Salida, it first crosses a range of metavolcanics, some nice and other kind of metamorphic rocks. Um, this creates a steepening in the river, and it's actually what creates Bear Creek Rapid. and it's actually why Bear Creek Rapid is so much more larger and bigger and dynamic than any of the other rapids in the stretch is because it's going over a section of rock that isn't crossed on any other part of this stretch. So uh, kind of why Bear Creek Rapid's a bit of an anomaly. Um, continuing down below that, it gets into first an area of some limestones and some shales uh, represented from Ordovician, Devonian, Mississippi, Mississippian eras and periods. Um, some of this has been extracted over the time. Some of it has not. Some of it's just kind of the big yellowish gray layers that you see as you go down the canyon. 
Uh, further beyond that, just past Wellsville, you get into this big evaporite basin. Um, if you have some keen eyes, river left as you're going past Wellsville, you can actually a bit, see a big uh, kind of gypsum extraction plant there. Uh, they're pulling evaporites out and using it for commercial purposes. And then finally, once you get down past Swissvale and around Rincon, you get into the classic red beds. Uh, those sandstone layers that are rich in hematite, uh, iron oxide, which gives it that deep red color. Um, Rincon's famous for its squirt spots, for its crazy hydraulics where the river does crazy things bubbling up, zones where it kind of doubles back on itself. Kind of cool place to learn, splash around, also good cliff jumping there as a lot of people know. So um, really, really neat, just such a dynamic amount of geology in such a short space within nine miles you go through like five different geologic layers so um I, like i said i don't think a lot of people who both their stet this stretch really realize just how neat it is and uh hopefully this can help some of those people appreciate it in the future so thanks for watching we'll see you out there in the next one